many times have you wished that things would change or that you would change, that there's things in your life that if you could just change it, if you could just get over it, if you could just create something new in your life, life would just be so wonderful. Or how many times have you wished if that person would change or if these kids would change or if my boss would change, right? I mean, how many of us just wish things could be different? So my name is Michelle and if this is the first time you've been to my channel, what you will find here is biblical encouragement. And I release a video every Wednesday morning. So I just want to encourage you to check that out. So today we're going to be talking about the difference between biblical motivation and worldly motivation in how they're different and how biblical motivation is lasting real motivation that helps you not only make changes in your life, but that helps you progressively change and live a life that glorifies the Lord. All right, let's get into it. Well, today I just want to encourage you as believers in Jesus Christ, we are going to see change. Listen, change is inevitable, but progress is not. So as believers in Jesus Christ, we should be more concerned or more focused on progress than we are change. But let me explain that a little bit. I'm going to read from Isaiah 43 verse 2. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire... You shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you, for I am the Lord your God. Listen, when we become believers, sometimes we are told or made to believe that we're going to live this happy life, that we're never going to have problems anymore, that we're never going to run into difficulties, that we're not going to have trying situations. I guess my dog wants to hear this message too. Anyway, that is simply not the truth. Like just because we become believers in Jesus Christ doesn't mean that all of our problems and difficulties and irritations are suddenly going to disappear. It's quite the opposite because now we know the difference between living a life that glorifies the Lord and living a life that simply just glorifies ourselves, or that we are just simply living to get through. Listen, we were created to live a life that glorifies the Lord. And according to John 10, 10, we know that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord, Jesus Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly to the full until it overflows, depending on which version of the Bible you're reading. But to me, that simply means that we are not called to just make it through this life, to just grit our teeth and do whatever it takes to get through these situations or circumstances. Listen, as believers in Jesus Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you a little example of both. So before I became a believer in Jesus Christ, I was sold out for the self-help market. Like, I read all the books. I actually attended some seminars. One by uh, Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within, where I walked on a hot bed of coals just to prove to myself that I could do it. I mean, I was all in for this self-help stuff. And the thing about it is, self-help is so closely related to the Bible. But... It leaves out one very important and distinctive feature, and that is the Holy Spirit. Listen, we have the presence of God himself living on the inside of us through the Holy Spirit, all right? We know that there is a trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all three one, okay? So as believers... 
we are able to live in the power of the Holy Spirit when we are reading the word, okay? The Holy Spirit makes the word alive in us and gives us the strength and the ability to live out the word. So if we try to live out the word apart from the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be living a very victorious life. Listen, for many years, I was trying in my own strength, with my own willpower, with my own mind power to change things in my life. I wanted my life to radically change because the way I was living was not very fun. It was not very productive. And yeah, though it changed frequently, I was not making progress. I was simply just spinning my wheels and burning myself out, trying to get things to change in my life, trying to become a better person, trying to live in a more positive way. And I really just found myself at such a crossroads. And you know what? The Lord met me right there. And he allowed me to stay in that self-help arena for like 12 years. 12 years I tried to change myself. I tried to make better decisions, make better choices, live a more productive life. And yeah, some things changed. I mean, sure, I was making better choices, but when it became really difficult, most of the time I would just shrink back and choose those same old ways of doing things things because I just wasn't real sure how to like get over that hump, how to like get over that, that plateau, so to speak, right? I was just stuck at a certain level. And then I came across this book, actually the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale is what opened my eyes to scripture. I was saved through a book. A book that I thought was just another self-help book. Just another book to help me renew my mind. But you know what? It was the first book that actually delivered on that promise because it was written with and based on the truth of God's word. And that is what radically changed my life. And I became a born again believer for the first time in my life. And I really went after the Lord in the things of the Lord and change started to happen in my life. My mind started to be renewed in truth, knowing that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Knowing that if God be for me, who can be against me? Knowing that I can do all things through Christ. And those scriptures transformed my life. They transformed me from the inside out. And progress began to happen. Positive progress, positive change began to happen in my life. And I was finally at a point where something was working, right? I know what it's like to try hard. I know what it's like to read books and go through courses and and study in certain areas. I mean, I studied tapping. I studied manifestation. I mean, I was all in for that stuff because why? Well, because it resonated with me. I mean, I knew that change was possible. I knew that living a better life, making better choices could be a reality. But the missing link was the Lord Jesus Christ his word and the Holy Spirit. So now I believe that God has given me the gift of encouragement. And so now I like to encourage people. Yes, I want you to have positive thoughts. Yes, I want you to make good choices. Yes, I want you to make great decisions and make progress, positive change and progress in your life. Yes, but the way to maintain it long-term, like for the rest of your life, is to 
grow in the Lord. It's to renew your mind with scripture. It is to pray and rely on the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. When you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will make better choices, right? When you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will make better decisions for your life and your life will start going in a more positive direction and it will be lasting. You can make lasting change when you are making godly change. I hope that makes sense to you because we can make change in our life. Absolutely. Non-believers make change in their life. Non-believers, I mean, lots of them live great lives. Lots of them do positive things. But unfortunately, their hope is in themselves and in what they can acquire here on earth. Their hope is like in their material possessions. But for us believers, we know that our hope is in heaven. Our hope relies and rests on the truth of God's word that one day we will spend eternity in heaven with him and then the struggle will be over. Because make no mistake, it is a struggle here on earth to live a godly life. I get that. I'm not saying it's easy. I mean, if any of you have lived the Christian life successfully for any length of time, you know that it's not easy. We still face temptation. We still face decisions and choices that we get wrong. And consequences happen, negative consequences. That's just part of life. Right? But as a believer in Jesus Christ, we know that this isn't all there is. Okay? Like the struggle is going to end one day. We are going to live in eternity, in heaven, where the Lord says that he'll wipe every tear from our eyes because there will be no need to cry anymore. There will be no need to struggle, to try to just make it through, to grit our teeth and do it. Okay? That stuff's going to be over. I mean, what are we going to be doing in heaven? I don't know. To be honest, I don't really know. But I know that it's going to be a glorious place. And that is where I want to spend eternity. And I'm praying that that is where you want to spend eternity. So if you do, and if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, if you don't feel like you're born again, I just want you to pray a simple prayer. Say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, thank you that you paid my sin debt in full. Lord, I believe that you were sent here to die on a cross for my behalf, to pay my sin debt in full so that I could one day spend eternity with you in heaven. Lord, renew my heart and mind to believe that I have been forgiven once I place my faith and trust in you. And that's it. The Lord is going to answer that prayer and he is going to help you by filling you with the Holy Spirit. Now your job is to get into the word. Get into the word and allow the scriptures to renew your mind so that you can think different thoughts, so that you can make different choices, so that you can speak different words, so that you can live a different life, a life that progresses in a healthy, positive manner. So again, I just want to thank you for listening and I just want to encourage you to Get in the word. If you want to make real lasting change in your life, you have got to be in the word of God. You have got to be in prayer and you have got to be sensitive and obedient to the Holy Spirit. I hope that word encourages you today. If it does, please like and subscribe to this channel so that you never miss an encouraging word. All right, take care. God bless.